Cold girls against they wheel, chain them up in my basement. Cold girls against they wheel, chain them up in my basement. Four, five, six, fifty, chain them up in my basement. Use your common sense. I don't know how to hog that, people. Chain them up in my basement. That's stupid. When you say teenage, how are we talking? Hey, did you hear the one about R. Kelly? Probably not, because he's in jail. <laughs> 30 years, and we should be happy. But the problem is, it took entirely too long, didn't it? R. Kelly is in jail for trafficking. For 30 years. Great stuff. Woo! A man who should have been to jail a long time ago finally gets to go to jail. He needed to go a long time ago. And when you look at the signs, they were there. Okay? They were all there. I know a lot about R. Kelly. Because, as a child growing up, he sung the song for one of my favorite movies, Space Jam. He literally sang one of my favorite songs that I used to sing as a kid, and I cannot believe that I used to sing the song of a man who had woman in a sex dungeon. As a kid, that's crazy on every level. By the way, if you want to know why I'm wearing black, it's because someone's career just died and so did their life. Uh, I think it's appropriate. I also thought of maybe doing a little bit of a lawyer Leo because I think everything he's done is legal except make good songs. And once again, I asked the question, how could we not see the science? Here's a little breakdown of everything he's done. 1994, he marries this girl called Leah, who is one of the greatest R&B singers, and her life was tragically cut short. But you know what was even worse? When R. Kelly was 27, he was dating her. Huh? What's the problem with that? Oh, I don't know. She was 15 at the time, and her debut album, produced by him, was called Age Ain't Nothing But A Number. Lovely. Classy. As if there wasn't signs already. He got a fake marriage certificate and married her, claiming she was 18 when she was actually 15 and bribed an official. R. Kelly has always been doing this. In 1996, he got sued for emotional distress. Honestly, it's probably just because he was singing the opening to Bump and Grind. 2001, sued by an intern. I mean, how could she not? June 2002 was probably one of the biggest things that ever happened at the time. There was a S-tape released by R. Kelly. Well, I don't know if he released it, but he was uh, getting it on. The problem was he was peeing on someone, which isn't illegal. It's just frowned upon. But what is illegal is uh, she was not of age. So now we have two huge signs and we're only up to 2002. Thing is, he got arrested in 2022. So we still got 20 more years of this sh Nothing really happened in that time, but if you watch Surviving R. Kelly, you will see that even during his music videos, he was doing some really bad stuff. We come to 2017 and allegations of a cult start forming. Apparently, this man has been housing younger women in his basement, not letting them leave Chicago, which sounds like something Kanye West would do if you were going to listen to his music and you didn't say it was good. He would just keep you there until you reconsider. By 2018, victims start approaching the press. And the story starts coming out. It literally took a documentary in 2019 for R. Kelly to step out and be like, Oh, I am fighting for my life! An interview which we'll take a look at today, among others. And by July of 2019, the cases have started piling up against him, so much so that people thought we should take it to court. We get to June of 2022 and boom, 30 years in prison, you can't come back from that. By the time R. Kelly gets out of prison, if he serves his whole sentence, he will be 85 years old. And I don't see nothing wrong with a life sentence. Sorry, R. Kelly, but I had to do it. As much as I love this guy's songs, I just hate the person he chooses to be. Because I'll tell you what, I love Ignition Remix. This is the remix to Ignition, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Mama rolling that body, got every man in here wishing. It's so hard not to sing his songs, but it's even harder not to see him in prison and be like, you, you belong there, bro. Today, anyway, we're taking a look at some of the interviews that led up to this because I think there were huge tell-all signs and I just wanted to break them down. So it's a little bit of lawyer Leo, maybe a little detective Leo, and mostly, usually on this channel, disappointed Leo. I'll be disappointed if you don't subscribe. And hey, that's a guilt trip, but I'm not on trial today. R. Kelly is. By the way, if you want to follow me at 16leo underscore, that way you could tell me your thoughts or give me ideas on the next video. Hey, future Leo here. Have you ever wanted to listen to an artist who sings good songs but doesn't actually do illegal things with their life? Well, now you can, because it's me. I'm plugging myself. That sounded way better in my head. I have a new song coming out tomorrow, which I produced and recorded myself. I think you'll really like it. All you have to do is click the pre-save button and it will help so much with the song. 
That's what I'm told. I don't actually know how Spotify works. But thank you so much if you do. La, 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 la. Let's make a bet. If you listen to it and don't like it, you can tell me I suck on my Instagram. But if you like it, you have to tell me you do. That's just how we do things. Thanks so much. Back to you, Leo. By the way, the R in R. Kelly stands for regret. All right. Look, R. Kelly is a lot of things. He's a victimizer. He's a guilt tripper. He's a manipulator. He's a cult leader. He's a sensual deviant. He's a liar. But what he isn't is a truth teller. You calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. <laughs> And that is very evident in all of his interviews, which I think hold clues that we may have missed when we first started. So I've gathered together a list of some of the best interviews I think he's done that have really bad tells, and I wanted to take a look at them with you guys. Here is an interview from 1994 with Aaliyah. So at the time, he was 27 and she was 15. And there's already signs that this dude is crazy! Okay, let's go. Sorry for the quality, by the way. Everybody seems to think that y'all are either girlfriend or boyfriend or cousins or <laughs> just let's name. let's just get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. There's the first sign. <laughs> he doesn't even have hair. What are you scratching? I also really love how the interview is like, are you guys boyfriend or girlfriend or like cousins? That's the only two options. They can't not just friends. You're either related. Or you've dated. Or sometimes both. I don't... Which one is it? Well, no, we're not related at all. At all. No, we're not. We're just very close. He's my best friend. Yeah, cool. Now, who found one? Did you notice that? Did you notice that? I think that's a huge sign. Oh, uh, she says, we're best friends. And he's like, in the whole wide world. You can hear him say it. And then she goes to him, looks at him, and is like, yeah, yeah, in the whole wide world. He needed that control. This man is controlling without knowing it. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, because this is in really bad quality, but they're wearing the exact same clothing. I'm not saying that that's in itself is possessive, but when you put all of the clues together, R. Kelly, who, mind you, owned a cult and never let girls leave. In fact, the cult was so bad that they had to ask to use the bathroom. He'd have to give them permission to use their bodily functions. You don't tell, you, you don't think this man was controlling? I think he was controlling. In the whole wide world. Um... I found Leah once I got up to Detroit. I didn't have to hear her sing because she was glowing. Keep in mind, he, she says that we're just friends. He's 27 at the time, she's 15. What do you have in common with a 15-year-old? That would be like me right now looking at an 8-year-old and being like, besides Yu-Gi-Oh, what do we both like, mother f What do we both like? Oh yes, Bob the Boulder. What else? We've got two things in common. You got me there. Sorry, Bob. Nothing. Because at a certain age, you just shouldn't associate with people, just for your own good, don't make friends with a 13-year-old if you're like 20-something. It's just, I don't see the merit in it. I just don't. Life's not a fairy tale, and it's going to be very, very hard, or people are going to make presumptions, and unless you want to live with those, don't do it. Anyway, the next thing he says is that he met her and didn't even need to see her sing. He just saw her and knew she was the one. Which normally sounds great in a marriage, but when you're having an illegal marriage which, again, they did in Vegas, it's, it's very creepy. I know your name is Robert, but do they say, Yo, Art, Yo, Kelly, Yo, <laughs> Robert, Yo. Ah, uh, Kelly, uh, some call me Ark. Some call me the master of piping down these bitches. Sorry. Some call me in 30 years when I'm out of prison. I bet you are Kelly looking at these interviews like, God damn it, I wish I could go back. I believe I can fly. I believe I can go back in time. I think about it every night and day uh, I wish Aaliyah would save the day How do you mix with uh, studies and slash artists? Well, it was very hard to intertwine school with the career It's not like we work because we're like really close So it's like just fun really I don't ever remember working Yeah, Robert doesn't remember working because he probably didn't And I want to remind you again that R. Kelly produced Aaliyah's first album and called it Age Ain't Nothing But A Number, which in today's society would be the biggest red flag in the world. Back then, apparently in the 90s, people were just like, man, 
that Michael Jackson is slick. They were like focused on other things because clearly R. Kelly was getting away with almost moto. Genuinely. Where'd the title of the album come from? She's running around the studio one day with her friends. <laughs> Tell my age ain't nothing but a number, girl. I'm uh, like, for the record, you are how old? That's a secret. Uh-oh. So, stuff like that. I think that it's very simple why I think this is an issue. First of all, it's illegal. That's the biggest one. Secondly, the power dynamic is so, so blatant that it's almost hard not to believe that this woman was being so manipulated to the point that she didn't even know what she was doing. When, when you're 15, you're just not going to know the intentions of a 27-year-old. And I just... I can't believe anybody let that happen. Again, R.I.P. Aaliyah. Uh, tragic what happened to her. But, jeez. Uh, R. Kelly got life, literally. Right. That's how we met. And I sang for him when I first met him. You know, she's grown. And that's what you have to have for someone like me. Because if you're not glowing in some kind of way, I can't even touch you. You know, uh, and that's what Liz... Yeah, well, apparently a lot of people are glowing in your life then, bro. Jesus, what do you... An ET or something? Can you phone home? Can you can you make the one prison call to call home and go back to wherever it is your mind is? Even in 1994, this dude was speaking crazy. He just came onto the scene with intentions of evil. Some people are born evil, like Shakespeare said. Some people achieve evil, and some people thrust their evilness into another person until they go to jail. Sorry, that's literally the same. I kind of just laid back and let him you know, kind of take control because... God damn it, she literally said, I kind of just laid back and let him take control. It's just, it writes itself. He had the experience. Right. And of course the talent's there, but I learned a lot from him. And there is those two, R. Kelly looking like if you step any closer, he's going to start throwing hands. Of course, that was that interview. And time has passed since then. R. Kelly is now a bona fide superstar. But... An alleged sex tape comes out in which he urinates on someone and she is underage. There is a big case and people are now saying R. Kelly likes the younger girls and they do not like him back and he is doing illegal stuff. He now has to go and do another interview, which he does. And this is the funniest interview I've ever seen in my life. I just want to stress that. Let's watch. You know, wondering about you. Do you like teenage girls? A simple question by the interviewer. R. Kelly, do you like teenage girls? All he had to do was sit into the camera and be like, Hell no, I like them older. And people would have left him alone. But this is what he said. When you say teenage, how are we talking? It left the interviewer that speechless that he was like, Girls who are teenagers. 19? 19 and younger. I have some 19-year-old friends. Ah, well, 19-year-olds at the age that he's at would seem to be a little creepy. Of course, this is a music industry, and I don't want to say that you can't make friends who are above the age of consent, because whatever, you, you know, from that point, it is your prerogative, and I'm not here to judge you. But at the same time, this is R. Kelly trying to save his own ass. Do I have some 19-year-old friends? Yeah. Do I have some 15-year-old friends? Hell yeah. Do I have some 10-year-old friends? Most of them. His manager's like, no, oh, cut it, R. Kelly. What, why would you say it? But I don't like anybody illegal if that's what we're talking about, underage. That's literally what we're talking about, my man. <laughs> that is the only thing we're talking about. Some people think that you like underage girls. What do you say to them? They're crazy. This is wrong. I don't know what that is. That's falsified information. Absolutely deny those claims is what he should have said. What did you actually say, my man? I usually don't get into what people think about me. You know, even before the trial, people have had their opinions about Robert, you know, and that's probably because it has a lot to do with me. Kind of stay shy away from the crowd, you know, because I'm always in the studio. It's kind of a hard process of thought to follow when there's no sense being made. I, I think what he said was it's kind of hard and he doesn't know what to do in a crowd. I'm, what I'm assuming has happened is R. Kelly sees a bunch of people and he's like, that's more than two, and then gets very, very flustered and and then does illegal activities, I think. Look, I'm not as loyal. I, I don't want those problems. Digging deep into the basement all the time of my house. Oh! This man said he's digging into the basement of his house. The basement is where he had his uh, sex dungeon. I, Mr. Kelly is leaving more clues than Sherlock Holmes over here. God damn. All right. 
creating music. So, you know, people, when they don't know you and they can't really touch you like they could someone else. I'm sorry, man. I don't think people are touching you. The problem was the opposite, literally. Uh, this is a guy who wrote the lyrics, I'm feeling on your booty. And he's not a pirate, so. They, they, they seem to form opinions or have uh, thoughts uh, about you that they like to, you know, think. You know what the funniest thing about R. Kelly is? When he went to trial, his lawyer said that R. Kelly was illiterate. He couldn't read, which is the funniest shit in the world because he's a writer. Which means every time he wrote lyrics on paper, he was like, Look at this! And they were like, That's good, R. Kelly! And he's like, Read it back! I don't know what I said! That's why he makes no sense half the time when he talks. The only time he ever does well is when you hear him sing. He should have just sung every word, like in the court, like, I didn't do it, but I do like your booty, unless you're overage. Some of the people who have worked with you have said that there's an issue here. Uh, your former manager has said publicly that there's an issue of concern here. So now the manager goes on to former people, former employees who have said bad about R. Kelly. And his response is chef's kiss. Your brother Kerry has said there's an issue of concern here. What issue of concern? Mm -hmm. What do you mean when you say issue of concern? Oh, it's a concerning issue is what that means. They've said that they're concerned that you like underage girls. Let me put it to you this way, man. Let's not put it this way, man. All you have to say is vehemently, no. No, no, no. No underage. Not for me, sir. No thank you, please. But, but he doesn't say that. If you had someone work for you, and, and they're mad because they're not working for you anymore, and they're used to getting a certain amount of money, or they're used to getting a certain amount of fame because they work for you because you're famous. I'll tell you what, they might be mad, but they probably wouldn't say that you fiddle with the diddle of a little kittle. You know what I mean? Do not listen to the people that was fired, <laughs> you know. D don't even listen to the people that was hired. Oh. <laughs> don't listen to the people who were fired. Hey, don't even listen to the people I hired. Those people are even crazy. I don't even know why I hired them. This is, don't, don't listen to anybody. Listen to me. Listen to me and me only, Mr. Man. You know, listen to the facts and, and get in, and, and, and get into what you think and make your own opinions. If you're going to have an opinion about me, have your opinion about what you may think about me. Be. Oh, my God. My head is not equipped for today. Uh, if you're going to have your opinion of me, listen to the facts and have an opinion of what you think opinions will be. You do. You could. You you want you want. Him to do you so much you could do anything. It's like when Google AI types and it just says random. That's R. Kelly's mind. It's just R. Kelly, R. Kelly. What? What burger? Burger McRib is back. Hey, young girl? Nope, nope. Oh, don't say that. You know, what you definitely don't do is go by somebody that was fired and they're mad and pissed off at me because they were fired. Right, okay. So you don't ever listen to someone who's fired by R. Kelly because they're mad and pissed off. At least they're not pissed on. But your brother, Kerry, mm -hmm. was not fired. He's still your brother. Yeah, he was fired. Okay, so brother who used to work for him is now fired. It, uh, but he's still your brother. Doesn't matter. He's still my brother, but if he was still my brother, why did he get fired? <laughs> if he was still my brother, why would he get fired? That's some, that's some trigonometry. That's some trigonomics. That's some full of trigonomics right there. God damn. Why did he get fired? I can't get into that. Okay. You know? Jeez, this interview is a roller coaster of my emotions, but that is how it ended. What an amazing, interesting man this person is. He cannot formulate or articulate most of the things that he needs to say. And when he's left out to dry by himself, his team of crisis management cannot save him. It's like watching the Titanic and the dude took a nosedive into the iceberg and was like, this movie's too long, let's end it faster. Like, that's how bad it is, watching this man. So as if that wasn't bad enough, years later, after many, many allegations, for some reason, R. Kelly decides to do an interview with Huffington Post. And the interviewer is now a girl who is going to be asking R. Kelly about the many accusations that he has because at this point, it's 2016 or 2015, and these accusations have been well and truly out in public. R. Kelly's image has all but been soiled. Soiled it! Soiled I command it. you to soiled stop it. that. Soiled 
Stop that and return to your post. And we're now heading into the Me Too movement and probably more rights than we ever ever had. And we recognize that this man is not the man that he was in his songs. So rightfully so, the interviewer absolutely grills him and he walks out on this interview. There's going to be no negativity. I'm talk I'm just asking you questions. The next question is something negative out of your mouth. If I think it's negative, I'm going to walk. So anyway, R. Kelly's already, you know, he's got his scarf on and he's got a little attitude. And uh, yeah, this lady has uh, come off on the wrong side because she's asking some, uh, some very intrusive questions like, did you do it, R. Kelly? Did you really do it? And he just is not having it. Um, would you say that you have a healthy relationship with sex and that that is reflected musically? I did not come here to get interrogated. I didn't come here for a deposition. You know what a deposition is? I know. I, I don't know if she knows, but you've been through enough to know. <laughs> so go on. I'm very aware of what a well, deposition is. I'm should, asking you about you your music. With me when, when I, asked when about I your music. say that this sounds sort of like a deposition. I think it may be the not. accent, but no. I'm no, asking you specifically about your music. I didn't even hear your accent. I only hear your English. Damn! Woo! Yeah, write that down in the book of what the fuck? That didn't even try to make sense. I wish R. Kelly mimicked her accent and was like, I don't, I don't know what your accent is, mate. I don't get it. I'm not sure about it. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm just not here to be interrogated. Okay, love? I don't get it. Now, I'm asking you about your not, music not and your lyrics. This is a deposition. This is not, this is not about R. Kelly who has an album out. This is about trying to interrogate me and this is about, you know, disrespect. By the way, who goes to Huffington Post to promote an album? What the f yeah, actually, who do you think your audience is, R. Kelly? This is like R. Kelly going in Chuck E. Cheese and be like, Remember that song I wrote? I don't see nothing wrong. Hey, hey, Chucky, Chucky, come here with a little bump and grind. And I'm going to sit here. Mr. Kelly, I don't believe be I'm disrespecting Mr. Kelly, I don't believe I'm disrespecting you. I asked you a well, very that's, specific that's question about your lyrics. Your intelligence. Have you ever been disrespected by a guy who couldn't read his own name if he wrote it? Like, that is special, that type of disrespect. Wow. I'm going to ask about a... I respect that you have a job. I'm going to just go to a, a, a comment from... Do you from drink? <laughs> I'm sorry, where did that come from? <laughs> oh. Do I drink? Mm hmm Yeah. Do you get drunk? Yeah. You fall all over and not know where you're at? Well, not really, mother... I don't think you have to get that drunk. What are you, a pirate? Are you literally Captain Jack Sparrow? I don't understand the line of questioning, but no. I see, exactly. But it ain't positive, is it? Um, maybe, I guess not. I guess he's right. I, I don't even know how to answer that. In New York, I'm having a great time. I'm finna go visit some friends. I'm finna do some, some more business. I'm finna have a great time. I didn't come here for you to spoil that. A so couple, a, well, so R. Kelly just gives a one more. He's like, you got one more question. I'm out in New York having a great time and during the last few years of my freedom. I don't know about you, but I'm going straight to jail. Like, whoa. Uh, so, uh, yeah, just you, you got one more question, lady. I have one more question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I knew it. If you just look at the interviewer, she looked at her screen and she was like, <laughs> one more, huh? One more hardball. Let's do it. And she goes for the hardest question of all time. What do you say to the multiple fans that I say, say I there have been fans. multiple accusations against you, against young women in Chicago, and they people are concerned are me, about your past? R. Kelly just talking over her because he thinks that maybe he can do that. Maybe when the judge starts sentencing him, he can talk over them. Um, R. Kelly, we're sentencing you uh, to Mr. Judge. Wait, what I are just you doing, say Mr. That Kelly? Your booty's so big what? and hey, I wanna listen, do my train of thought is just going out the, the window. What? I, oh, oh my McDonald's God, he's just saying so many words. Many I just don't know how to sentence him. Like, uh, I have 30 years, teeth. R. Kelly. I love them says. all. It doesn't matter who they are. If they hate me, they love me, they want to destroy me, whatever. I love them all. Yeah, well, that was the problem. You loved them too hard and they were too young. And I love you too. Nope. No, we're not gonna teach Crash Bandicoot that. We're not teaching Big Crash that. You can't say that to random people. You can't. You can't be talking like that to people, especially if you're uh, accused of many accusations. I love you coming from a person who's wholesome is the greatest thing. I love you coming from a person who's R. Kelly is one of the worst nightmares of all time. You don't need to give me any of your I love, love, sir. everybody. Okay, I, I have a video everybody. question for you from you a fan. Have if no you video questions for me, because this interview is over. Okay, well, Mr. Right. K, I, thank you very uh, much. <laughs> this interview is over. 
I like how he emphasized like the weirdest part of that word at any given juncture. Thank you Beautiful. for being Thank here. You, so I, much. Thank you, you don't have to qu right, comment on my appearance right. there. Whew, and that was Huffington Post. Uh, yeah, I've huffed and puffed at that one. That is a absolute <laughs> show. But it's somehow not the worst interview he's done. Now, I'm pretty sure most people are familiar with this because it went viral in 2019, but the next interview is one after the documentary came out. It is R. Kelly at his last point. And he is not a person in control. He is a person who has lost all control and is fighting for the chance to stay relevant and alive and also prove his innocence. This is R. Kelly at his lowest point. And it is sweet to watch. I don't often say that about a person, but when you're looking at someone who deserves to go down and it's finally time, it is a sight to see. Let's watch. They all say that Kelly preys on vulnerable women and young girls. I am surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? Yeah, why are you, R. Kelly? Why'd you do it? And then why'd you do the interview? You clearly suck at them. I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. Okay, so R. Kelly's tired. Got it. He's tired of the lies and now he's going to set the record straight by proving to the world that he is not, in fact, a person who owns a cult and dungeon in which he takes underage and vulnerable women to live there and never leave. This is like Willy Wonka if it went really bad. And you know what the sad part is? He legitimately had an album called Chocolate Factory. What are the lies that you're hearing that disturb you most? Oh my God. Um, all of them. Nice. Good, good answer. <laughs> Um, got little girls trapped in the basement, helicopters over my house, um, trying to um, rescue someone that... Oh, he also made a song called Trapped in the Closet, which would be kind of, you know, inappropriate, but also if he was in jail and then he finally made Trapped in the Basement. I mean, it would be something. Handcuffing people, starving people. I have a harem, uh, what you call it, a, um, a coat. Mm -hmm. I don't have a cult. I just have a room full of people who do whatever I say willingly and will drink the Kool-Aid. What do you call that? That's just friendship. I don't even really know what a cult is, but I know I don't have one, you know. Ah, okay. I don't know what it is, but I know I don't have it. I, I don't even know what a cult is. But <laughs> it's not me. Come on. <laughs> have you done anything that you regret? Have you done anything wrong? Lots of things wrong. Have you okay. broken any laws when it comes to women? Oh, no laws, ma'am, just hearts. I've been sorry for all of the things that I caused you. I was unfaithful. Mm -hmm. Also, I guess you have to listen to the song. Because you're in the basement all along. And there is no way you're getting home. Sorry about that. Absolutely not. Why did he whisper it? I don't get it. You, if whispering it doesn't make it true. The six-part series interviewed 50 people. Were you saying everybody in that documentary was not telling the truth about you? Everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a documentary against you. Why would they say anything good about you? Oh my God. What? This is like Osama Bin Laden doing an interview like, man, they had so many documentaries about me. I didn't see one good thing. Who, who the f*** would do anything good about you? Like, oh, God, R. Kelly. What do you think he was watching this? Like, oh, my God, it's me. What are they saying about me? He watched like every episode. He's like, maybe this one's a good one. I don't know. I'm going to name the names. Andrea Kelly, your ex-wife. Kitty Jones. Lisa Van Allen. Lizette Martinez. Jerron DePace. Mm -hmm. All of the brave women who've come forward and uh, who deserve reparations. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. Why would all these women tell these different stories about you if they were not true? And they don't know each other. That's crazy, right? It almost sounds as if it's true. When you have like one person accusing you of something, uh, if you have two, if you have Bull Cosby numbers, then there's an issue. Once there's too many people saying the exact same thing, you have to look at yourself and be like, hmm, maybe, maybe the problem isn't there, maybe it's you. You know, R. Kelly? That defies logic to me. Right, right. Until you hear 
the explanation. I would love it. This is like a magician being like, wait till you see the magic trick. It's crazy. And I will pull it out of my pocket. It goes something like this and just take it. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me. Are you blaming this on social media? I am attempting to, yes. Is it working? No? Well, then I will attempt a new method. R. Kelly was found not guilty on 14 counts of child pornography after prosecutors in Chicago failed to convince a jury that he was a man seen in a sex tape with a girl as young as 13. God damn, R. Kelly. Just wildin'. He made Ignition Remix. I love that song. He also wrote Michael Jackson's You Are Not Alone. And, and he's not going to be alone because he's in a jail cell probably sharing it with people. Oh. This time charged with aggravated criminal sexual abuse of four women, including three who the charges say were minors at the time. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone? Under wait, wait, listen to the question first. No. Have you never had sex? No. To the age of 17. No. Never. No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read. I'm going to tell you something, Gail. There's one you. I'm going to tell you. Uh, Mr. Kelly, please let a woman talk. What women said about me, what women, so nobody's allowed to be mad at me and be yeah. scorned and, and lie on me. Mm -hmm. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. You know, it's a body language thing that is... Uh, yeah, pretty pretty commonplace at this point when someone says a word and their body does this and they're lying. Uh, it's their body's way of indicating that yeah they're they're lying to you. So if you're like uh, yes, if you're trying to say yes and doing this, it's usually a lie. Like I don't know how how that'll work in court, but a body language expert will probably tell you that uh, him saying the words absolutely and doing this while he says it is an indication that and there's a lie. I have been. Buried alive, but I'm alive. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would never be held for anybody. R. Kelly? I don't need to. Why would I? I like how it, when he's angry, he starts singing. I don't need to. Why would I? With all I've been through in my way, way past, to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said. What, how stupid would I be to do that? I as stupid as you are. I didn't say you That's were holding. That's stupid, guys. I didn't. Is this camera on me? Every camera's on you, bro. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Oh, right now I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street. That is way too specific for you to lie about, my friend. What the hell is wrong with you? Oh, people just going down the street and so I said, shoe, and she tells me that she needs my money. I said I'll get it for you, but you can't eat without me. And I told her, I said, Christine, I'ma slap you in the face. If you test my patience Was that camera on? That camera was on? How much it cost to delete that? Quit playing Robert. I didn't do this stuff This is not me I'm fighting for my life Y'all killing me with this <laughs> My favorite part I'm fighting for my effing life Y'all killing me with this I gave you 30 years of my career! Robert. 30 years of my career! That is, you know, we've seen Robert hit the falsetto and hit some of the greatest notes known to man. I don't know what this is. This is like a Muppet getting choked. Are y'all trying to kill me? You're killing me, man! This is not about music! I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids and I can't do it! I oh man, when he screams, it sounds like singing. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids, and uh, y'all ain't letting me do it. Robert, are you singing? I'm recording a track. It's called "Gale Is Wrong." Y'all just don't wanna believe the truth. You don't wanna believe it. He's doing like sermons now. At, at this point, his crisis team is like, "Whoa, we should step in." Like 10, 20 minutes too late. You don't wanna believe it. At this point, we briefly pause the interview to give Kelly a moment. Robert, Robert, sit down. How much Xanax didn't you take? How about that weed I told you to smoke and pretend you're Bob Marley instead of R. Kelly? None, none of that? This is, it doesn't even make sense. Why would I hold all these women 
Their mothers and fathers told me we're going to destroy your career. <laughs> Is this the funniest shot to see people working on him like a pit stop? Like a tire that's blown out being like, just, just make it to the finish line, R. Kelly. We need that money. That's literally the only reason these people are on his team. Nobody really believes this man. I mean, come on. Really? At this point in his career, you think people are really trying to mess with him or vibe with him? There was a point in time when people actually were with him. Jay-Z even had a tour with him and then was like, oh, something's wrong about this guy and left mid-tour. He was like, I, you know, I am not with these problems. I don't know what R. Kelly's about, but I'm not with it. If that many people are leaving, then there's a real issue. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. It's real girls out there missing. And y'all ain't finding them. They're in my basement. And y'all ain't finding them. Y'all's wrong. I have taken them so you can do this. I am helping the police by making them better. Buried in Robert, we have to have a conversation. Really, I, I don't want you just ranting at the camera. Yeah, Robert, uh, you, you, you're just talking at people now and just screaming and talking about chains. Um... I mean, you seem to have a vast knowledge of the chains, but can you just can you just stick with the topic? I, I think you. I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes, what kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart. Uh, okay, well, that's the problem. He had a big heart. What is this? Uh, how do you like to plead, Mr. Kelly? I have a big heart. Uh, because my heart is so big. People betray me, and I keep forgiving them. You sound like you're playing the victim here. I am attempting to. Is it working? No? Well, then I will try some other method. Your income. It was reported that your income was very high. I'm income? Mr. Kelly, please not right now. Okay, sorry. Go on. And yet when you were in jail last week, the bond was $100,000, mm -hmm. and they said R. Kelly couldn't even afford to get himself out of jail. What is your financial situation? My finances is as good as my, my reading skills. It's all right. So many people have been stealing my money. Three weeks ago was the first time you went to Bank of America Absolutely. by yourself? by myself. Didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know what the hell was going on. That is really bad, bro. Your financial situation is one of the worst things I've ever seen, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Where your money is? Me. A lot of it's on me. And people say he doesn't but, have money because he had to pay so much in settlements. What do you say about that? True. Lie. He says he was unable to access his bank account to make bail. How can I pay child support? How? Usually you just, you, you sign it. I don't know. I've never been in the position, bro. I never had a kid and then messed up with the wife so badly that I had to pay. You tell me, actually. If my ex-wife is destroying my name and I can't work, how can I work? How can I get paid? How can I take care of my kids? Oh, he's doing it again. How can I work? How can I get paid? How can I take care of my kids? And also that girl in the back, she's mighty fine. If she's over 18 and she's not mine. How? Your ex-wife says- Use your common sense. Oh my God, he's screaming off camera again. Your ex-wife says Three, you abused her, Robert. 13 lying, 13 years being married. I flew in on a helicopter. That does, okay then, all right. That was un inappropriate in many ways, but mostly just because of relevance. With a damn puppy, and I proposed to Drill, whom I was in love with. We got married. Hell of a proposal. I made mistakes. I'm not perfect. You want to you wanna marry me? I flew in on a helicopter. I got a puppy. <laughs> you like it? I'm just being honest. Somebody sent me something on my phone, and it said that I hog-tied her. I don't know how to hog-tie people. <laughs> Someone said, I hog tied her. I don't know how to hog tie people. It was a normal knot. What the f, bro? It's the way he said it with like genuine, like, I believe that he didn't know how to hog tie her. I believe it. I don't know how to hog tie people. I just, I just use the normal, I use the chains. This is real. This is not a lie. What kind of woman would tear down a dad? Many. 
who's trying to have a relationship with their kids. You know how many kids need a relationship with their father? What is your relationship with your father? Oh children? my God. I have so many relationships with kids. I tell them that they father. I say, call me daddy. And they say, that's illegal. I'm trying to help the kids off the world. And people telling me it's illegal. I got so much love for the kids. And now I'm in jail. What is your relationship with your children? Zero. Zero. <laughs> I don't have one. I, I, it's, it's struggling. <laughs> Zero. But I know my kids love me. And I'm in love with my kids. Um, that is how the interview ends. It's amazing and just un honestly, unintentionally super funny. It turns out that R. Kelly, again, finally was convicted this year in June of 2022. As per reports, on June 29, 2022, R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Kelly continues to challenge his New York conviction, while Kelly is also scheduled to face another federal trial in the Northern District of Illinois. Alongside his former employees, the indictment alleges Kelly both produced child S. A material and conspired with employees to corruptly win his 2008 acquittal. So he is being charged on charge on charge. By the time everything is said and done with the fees and everything inclusive, I really think R. Kelly is going to be finished. And so he should. This is the journey of one of the greatest, and I don't say this with any malice, musical people that have graced the music industry. He's definitely one of the most talented people I've ever seen. And he's also one of the worst people who's ever come into existence. When you mix the talent with the power and you get a good person, you get Keanu Reeves. When you mix talent with power in a bad way, you get R. Kelly. And unfortunately, this is how his story ends. It's a very, very sad ending to what would have been a legendary career, but now it's soiled. And I'm done with R. Kelly. I hope everyone is too. R. Kelly, the only time you're ever going to be singing now is in the shower. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that uh, you come back and join me on the next one. I hope that you enjoyed this. Please take care of yourselves. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey,